Hi there, in this video I'm going to have a look at carburation for the Jerry Howell V-Twin and you never know, I might even get uh, this little engine to fire up fingers crossed Now when I made the Hoglet V-Twin I decided to make uh, a Jerry Howell carburetor and uh, I produced a video series on that um, so if you're interested in terms of how I made these carburetors just check that series out uh, but what I need to do now is to make some flanges which will fit onto the carburetors like that and uh, the other side of that flange will bolt onto the cylinder head so off camera I've just drilled some holes through the flanges and the idea is that uh, this boss will fit in there like that and uh, I've decided to make these thicker than the actual drawing. Uh, these are a quarter of an inch in uh, sort of thickness. So uh, the idea is, obviously put it on the rotary table, clamp it down. This is a 12 millimeter end mill. So I've moved the Y axis six millimeters to get the edge on center. And then I've moved it another, uh, let me see, uh, 0.25 of an inch and uh, what I'll do is I'm going to turn the table clockwise I've put a little stop down here to stop this from spinning round and I'll uh, machine this edge down to uh, I'll be taking let me see 0.175 of an inch off So this is a pretty straightforward process. I'll continue machining this down to the required depth then I'll uh, switch the part around and uh, do this other edge and uh, once I've done that I'll get back to you. And for those who aren't familiar with my method of holding uh, stock on a rotary table this is how I do it. usually have a clamp or something at the top this is one two three block so this has uh, got some of these threaded holes in it this is a Morse taper blank Morse taper 2 uh, which uh, fits into the table nicely just tapped in with a little mallet and uh, once it's tapped in it's, ex it's at the exact same height as this 123 block and pull, pull the part off there you go this is a little mandrel so this uh, MT2 blank has been uh, tapped and I can fit all sorts of different sizes mandrels in it another one I've got so you just rotate around that piece this is a little stop which if you're rotating the table clockwise put the piece up against it here to stop it rotating and uh, it's just as easy as that this little one two three blocks just clamped uh, with a t-nut now the idea is to attach these flanges to the carburettors using Loctite 638 but there's a slight problem in the fact that if you Loctite them in place then you can't get these cap head screws in I mean what you can do is you can take the carb apart and get the screws in and then reassemble the carb but I don't want to really do that because I've got it all set up with the uh, limit stops and 
you know I'm happy with it I don't want to take it apart and then having to faff around um, trying to uh, get it right again especially when you can't view it from that end I'd have to view it from this end so I'd have to take this uh, spray bar out I think it is so my plan is obviously I've made this boss a little bit deeper more wider and rather than use these cap head screws I've got some other cap head screws cut the tops off and attach these uh, um, nuts to the top so it's, it's only the bottom one that interferes with the carburetor so my plan is to do something like that and then lock tight it together that one's okay and having done that I think I can sort of fiddle around with that and attach it to the uh, cylinder head using a spanner so that's my plan uh, but what I'll do is I'll it, lock tight in this is going to be a bit fiddly because it's got to be spot on sort of level like that so I'll, uh, I'll do that on the surface plate once I've done that I'll get back to you they've worked out okay so uh, what I need to do now is bolt these onto the uh, cylinder heads and I've just made some gaskets they're pretty straightforward things to make um, I actually bought some of these punches which work really well got my VB so uh, once I've bolted them on I'll uh, get back to you well those are the carbs set up um, what I haven't made is the uh, crankcase breather and from the drawings it seems to sort of suggest I might be interpreting them wrongly uh, but I think there's a fuel reservoir at the top which maintains a level and uh, Jerry Howell has a, a pump he has um, petrol in the base and he pumps it up to this reservoir and there's an overflow on it so it keeps the level right um, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try rigging up uh, a temporary fuel tank and see if I can get it running on one of these cylinders. Well these little engines never work first time do they? And uh, I've, I've borrowed the uh, fuel tank off the hoglet. It's probably a little bit too high is that? Um, so that can cause flooding. And uh, I, I connected it up to cylinder number uh, two first of all and it fired a couple of times uh, and then stopped and uh, I'm, I'm guessing it's flooded because the uh, spark plug was really really wet um, so I switched the fuel line round to cylinder number one and tried it and uh, nothing spark plug uh, was dry and um, this is a, an anti-clockwise rotation and if I check the spark plugs out, you can't see them, but they are sparking. So ignition isn't a problem. Um, so I, th I think I'm going to have to uh, take it all apart, check everything out again, and uh, then I'll get back to you. Well, before throwing in the towel totally, um, I think I'm just going to give it another try on cylinder 2 so we've got the uh, power on it and um, see what happens going the right way everything ok Hmm, bit of activity. He's squirting fuel out all over the place. So I reckon um, fuel is uh, a problem. You can see it all dripping here. 
so I think it's just too high, it's just flooding it. I'll have uh, moved the fuel tank down a little bit, give it another try. Bear in mind it might all be flooded anyway now. fuel out. Hey ho. Back to the drawing board. Well I'll just try the right hand cylinder before uh, totally throwing the towel in for today. It's on. Bit of fuel. Bit of fuel in air intake. See if that has any effect. Not a dicky bird. Oh well, call it a day. So just to console myself, I've got the little hoglet out. Philip Duclos odds and ends engine. So far, the Jerry Howell Farm Boy. Fantastically designed.
Well, I must say that didn't really go to plan and I uh, felt the need to restore some sanity by uh, running some of my other engines. Um, <laughs> um, but it did, it did highlight a few issues. Um, I think the first one, which wasn't obvious in the video, is there's, a, there's an oil leak between the valve gear case and the crankcase and uh, it's a piece of brass that's machined and uh, it's supposed to engage with a little uh, o-ring and when I looked at it I thought nah that's not going to work right um, and sure enough it hasn't. I had, I had two girls at making the, um, the little brass connector uh, so that needs to be looked at. Um, cylinder 1 or rather cylinder 2 seem to want to fire um, but I think there's a flooding issue there I don't think I've got the fuel level uh, height correct um, so really what I think I need to do is to get that crankcase breather sorted out which houses or it defines the actual fuel level um, so if I can sort that out that might sort of address the, the, um, the flooding in that cylinder. Um, the other cylinder um, dry as a bone um, so I can only think there's something wrong with the carburetor on that one. Um, so yeah so there's a few issues but th it always is with these engines and you've just got to work your way through them and uh, usually once you've bottomed them all out they, uh, they work very well. Um, but anyway uh, Fantastic weather outside, 26 degrees centigrade. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is to uh, have a few days off, enjoy the weather, uh, get my head into the right state and then uh, revisit this little engine. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you later.